Lance Hall here for Let's Discuss with Lance Hall. Happy to welcome Huli Bazooka of Chrysix to the program today. How are we doing? Yeah, great. I feel extremely great, man, especially after being on tour after this fucking pandemic situation. <laughs> yeah, let's jump right into that. You were, Chrysix was one, or Chrysix, excuse me, Chrysix. Yeah. Was one of the first international bands to tour Europe. Yeah, absolutely. On the, on the World Needs More Mosh tour. Yeah, we really realized how much the world needed Mosh. Yeah, we could see <laughs> last week. <laughs> where, and, where did you go and how was it? I mean, we played in Switzerland, Belgium, Netherlands, uh, Germany, Czech, Repu Czech Republic, and I, th I think I'm missing something. <laughs> it, it was uh, fucking great. I mean, uh, and it was uh, great because there's a lot of people, uh, you know, around these countries that came us right after the show and told us like, hey, man, you know, this is my first show after the pandemic. Mm. And I will remember this forever. And I mean, we could see, uh, you know, how happy the people uh, were uh, at the shows. And I mean, it, we felt a bit strange, you know, especially the first day without, you know, the crowd with no restrictions, without people sitting down, without social distancing. And we felt like, okay, man, this is like a show before the, the pandemic. And mm. it was fucking amazing. So was is it was it that way for the most part wherever you went pretty much returned to normal? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, it was a, a few restrictions uh, in Germany, for example. I remember we play in Munich, and the people uh, were supposed to be sitting down, but in the end, uh, <laughs> everybody stand up, and because it you know didn't make sense. I mean, everybody in the same venue. I mean. Mm, it doesn't matter if you're sitting down or, you know. Right, right. I mean, well, every th everyone was vaccinated and. Right, right. Yeah, absolutely. Let's talk about this EP, the Pizza EP. It's the coming out EP, September twenty fourth on Listable Records. Four tracks, yeah. sort of. Uh, you guys as tribute to say like you know the old days of EPs with uh, Metallica's Garage Days and Slayer's yeah, Halloween absolutely, and stuff like that. Yeah. We, we, we tried to, to bring back uh, the essence of, as you said, stuff like, you know, uh, uh, Garage Days, Penny Kufessin, uh, Come Down the Chapel, stuff like this, because we love the format. And we thought like, okay, now we are recording a new album that's coming out next year. I, I, can, I cannot share the exact date, but it's coming out next year for sure. And we thought like, okay, how about... Uh, to release an EP as an appetizer before before the full length album, and I think it's working perfectly. I mean, people is enjoying a lot the the pizza EP. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a great little snapshot, a great little tidbit, you know. And it it does what an appetizer is supposed to do. It makes you want more, you know. Yeah, especially uh, with pizza, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And speaking of pizza, you guys now have your own pizza out in restaurants over in Spain. Tell us about that. I mean, yeah, we love pizza, you know, and, you know, the, the idea of this EP started as a kind of joke because our guitarist, uh, Bibi Plaza, used to work as a pizza delivery boy when we started with the band uh, more than 10 years ago. And we all spoke a lot about, hey, man, I mean, he, he told me many, many times, like, hey, man, would, uh, I would love to do a song about my experience as a pizza delivery boy because I have a lot of anecdotes and it started like this, and then it turned uh, into uh, an amazing EP. <laughs> <I would say. laughs> so, so that's where the, the first track, No Tip for the Kid, comes from. Yeah. You must have some pretty good stories to come for that, huh? Yeah, No Tip for the Kid, it's a fucking biography of <laughs> Bibi <laughs> <laughs> Um Now, while the album itself doesn't come out until the 24th, and I see you've got it on white uh, splatter vinyl and red vinyl as well, it's going to be pretty cool. Yeah. Um, you guys have like a little uh, mini movie up on YouTube with the four tracks. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I have to say, directed by me. <laughs> okay, there we go. Yeah, Had you amazing. ever done directing or videos or anything like that before? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, 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 I've been behind the all Crisis, most of Crisis videos since the beginning. And this time I really enjoyed uh, this because we did uh, something different. I mean, this kind of short film with every single song is connected and we built, uh, you know, uh, 
the start with uh, starting with Noti for the Kid and then we connected the rest of the songs. And I think we really enjoyed, you know, the writing process and then the recording. And finally, after all the work, post-production, uh, I see the short film and, you know, it always uh, draws a smile <laughs> on my face. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's what I sort of found is I, I listened to the EP first. You know, I had okay. I had an advanced download. And I listened to that and I said, this is great. It's real thrashy. It's fantastic music. But there's a touch of humor in here, you know, that yeah. I was sort of picking up on. Yeah, as well. you know, yeah, you know, it's something that uh, we wanted to do because everyone knows about, you know, the shitty global situation, especially this pandemic. I, I, yeah. I, I don't I really don't think that what people need now, it's. Uh, talking about you know uh, shitty politicians and shitty situation and yeah. you know people needs uh, positivism and, and opt optimism in their lives and of course uh, let me let me say uh, people need mosh really need some mosh. yeah we really need mosh yes <laughs> yeah i mean absolutely. when you see a song title like no tip for the kid and raptors in the kitchen and it's tough to cook a song you know it's <laughs> you know uh i gotta admit when i first saw the, the title no tip for the kid it reminded me the title of the old scatterbrain song don't call me dude you know? oh yeah 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 absolutely <laughs> absolutely yeah yeah <laughs> great stuff there um and slice b uh raptors in the kitchen and stuff cook song you recorded <laughs> old school everybody in the studio everybody doing it everybody together yeah yeah and i mean we had so much fun recording especially uh, raptors in the kitchen which is the the first song that i sang along with our drummer javi mm -hmm. and we recorded the vocals both together and, and it was uh, fucking amazing because it's a pretty raw punk song And and I remember, as I said before, uh, noted for the kids started as a kind of joke. The same happened with the rappers in the kitchen in the kitchen because I'm a huge fan of Jurassic Park, as you can see. <laughs> yes. And I've been saying this for the last I don't know for the last three four years. Like, hey man, uh, I will write a song about raptors in the kitchen and blah blah blah. blah. <laughs> and then I remember when uh, Drakena, the the other guitar guitar player, and Javi came to the rehearsal place with this idea of a 40 seconds uh, raw punk song, I thought like, hey man, this is perfect for Raptors in the Kitchen. And I wrote the lyrics in, uh, I'm not kidding, in three, five minutes. <laughs> and, and you got the result. <laughs> Now, speaking of Raptors in the Kitchen, I understand you guys recently played your first stand-up comedy show. Oh, the, yeah, Ra yeah. the Raptors made an appearance. Yeah, the Raptors made uh, an appearance. Yeah, and, <laughs> and what's their havoc? I mean, we presented the 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 pizza EP in cinemas here in Spain, in Madrid and Barcelona, mm. and yeah, it was a pretty cool experience. I mean, people had a great time, you know, and especially during this Corona situation, I think something like this, especially here in Spain, that there's still a lot of restrictions you know, turning the, to the live shows and and giving something like this and making people love and, and having a good time and, you know, making people forget all, all, all the shit around us. I mean, we had a pretty good experience with this and we are extremely happy with the result. Very cool. Now, speaking of, of pizza, we talked about that briefly. You guys also do a barbecue sauce, a garlic sauce. A oh, yeah, sauce. absolutely. You yeah, got a, You got a Chrysix cookbook out? The world needs sauce. And yeah, we we have a crisis cooking book that's coming out uh, really, really soon. And it's going to be called Speed Metal Kitchen of Doom. <laughs> <laughs> you guys must be like one of the most well-fed bands on the planet, you know? Well, I don't know, but <laughs> we, for sure we had a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how, how did you guys come into incorporating all this along with the music? You know, because especially during this uh, pandemic, we had a lot of time to think. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I mean, we, I mean, we always love to do stuff like this, you know. Of course, our main thing is music, of course, and we really enjoy. But uh, we always try to offer uh, this kind of things to the fans. I mean, they really appreciate this, these things as, as an audience because, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, you know, when you go to see a show, if the band offers you something more than the music you are gonna remember the show right yeah are you gonna are you gonna take the kiss route are we gonna have crisis condoms and crisis <laughs> and maybe i should speak with gene simmons before doing that. yeah i'm sure he's got a copyright on it definitely <laughs> um 
Let's go back in time a little bit. You guys are, if I'm, if I have all my research done correctly, you're formed around 2008 in Barcelona, and the only changes you've really had in, in the band are, are on bass, right? Everybody yeah, else yeah, has all, been attacked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only on bass player. The the rest of the guys we are the same since yeah. the first day. Yeah, yeah. Where did you guys all like go to school together? Come together? How? Did, I how mean, did the we are the from the thing. It's we are friends uh, from the same hometown. I mean, and we used to be at the same bars, rehearsal place. I mean, because we are from a, a village like 60 kilometers from Barcelona. And it, the metal scene, it's like, you know, something that uh, everybody knows each other, you know? Mm-hmm. And we, th- I mean, the secret of this, I think it's that we are friends before bandmates. And we are like now five friends with uh, a common goal. And we have this super clear. We are friends before anything. And this is why we are still <laughs> the same people, more or less. Yeah. Then, of course, in 2009, you won the Valken Metal Battle Contest. Yeah. That must yeah. have been pretty cool. Yeah, because it, it was super strange because uh, as a band, we started in 2008. And then in 2009, you go to play at Valken. Yeah. You know, <laughs> we felt like, yeah. okay, this is uh, fucking amazing. And yeah, yeah, I... I mean, it's more than 10 years now, and I remember as it was yesterday. Mm. Uh, and I, But I was also reading that you guys have always had a fantastic work ethic. You know, you really worked at your craft and kept creating and kept improving. And I think that shows, you know, by a year into a band, winning a contest like that, yeah. continuing on with the success that you've had and everything, and now branching out the way you have. Talk to us a little bit about the work ethic. You know, everybody thinks rock and roll is so glamorous. Tell us about some of the stuff that's not quite so glamorous. I mean, this we this glamour thing, maybe it's a thing from the 80s. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I can assure you guys, this is, uh, I mean, it, it takes a really hard work to go on with a project like this. And you have to do a lot of sacrifices all the time. And yeah, it's been uh, definitely a decade of hard working and... And hard times, of course, but yeah. we are extremely proud, you know, taking this as a retrospective, you know, uh, seeing all these years, what happened through the years, our way to do things, how m- all the things we learned, you know, on, on our way. We're extremely proud of, you know, uh, the decision we made many, many years ago to start this project and yeah. all the things that came later. What was one thing I'm going to, I'm going to go two different ways with this next couple of questions here. What was one thing you learned that, that uh, you learned to do that helped you the most? What? uh, Okay. So especially, I don't know. I learned a lot of things, but uh, most of all to trust each other over Mm -hmm. everything, you know? And I think this is pretty important. And also, uh, I mean, maybe, Maybe it's, it sounds like a kind of topic, but uh, it's uh, to believe in what you are doing mm. over everything. I mean, because if you don't believe what you're doing, nobody's going to believe you. Right. Now to go in the opposite direction, what's what's a couple of very important things that you learned not to do as you came uh, along? <laughs> okay, uh, not to do. Mm. Yeah. Maybe to eat a pizza with extra spicy sauce before going to a steak. <laughs> <laughs> very true yeah I can see that. <laughs> definitely definitely um you know it just it makes me think you know when, when you talk to bands who have who work the way that as hard as you guys have yeah i remember seeing an ad in a guitar magazine and this was oh god probably 35 years ago okay it was a guy walking out on stage and you could see the spotlight coming down on him and it was shot from like behind the, the amps and, and you could see his back and his guitar and he was walking out onto the stage oh. and it said, while they partied, you practiced. Now it's your yeah. turn to play. Yeah. You know? And that really stuck with me, you know, yeah. while everybody else is partying and everybody's having have a good time. You've got your nose to the grindstone. You're doing the gigs. You're in the van. You're writing the songs. You know, you're learning production and video. And then the end result is you get this, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's a lot of work behind all that glamour you said before that people don't see, but it's there and you have to do it if you want to be where we are right now. Uh, Quite a journey. 
How did you start with with singing? Is it something that you aspire to do all along or something oh, you sort of fell I, into? Uh, OK, I started. Uh, the thing is, uh, I played in four bands before Crisis, and I started when I was 15 years old playing bass guitar and singing at the same time. I wanted to be, you know, some kind of uh, Tom Araya. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I started uh, I when I was 15 years old. And of course, uh, I, I didn't go to, you know, to classes or, or stuff like this. Yeah. But, uh, you know, over the years, I found my own technique. And of course, I became better and better because probably if we find something I did uh, when I started with uh, 15 years old, it probably would sound like shit. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, you know, slowly, step by step. And, you know, and I mean, I'm still learning. And that's the thing, the, you know, when you are doing this, that you never stop learning. Mm -hmm. no yeah agreed where was the moment in your life you say you started singing around 15 was that sort of the moment the aha moment this is what i want to do yeah i mean how'd, how'd that come about what i thought it's like i really love this i didn't know if like okay oh, yeah, this is what i want to do but I remember I was uh, 14, 15 years old. Uh, first Iron Maiden record uh, came to me. Mm. And, you know, I, I listened. It was Fear of the Dark. And I listened to Be Quick or Be Dead. And I was like, oh, whoa, what, what, what is this? And then I, I remember I, I decided to start playing bass guitar because I saw for the first time yeah, when the same age, um, Life After Death from Maiden also. And so mm. Steve Harris and, hey, man, I wanted to do this. And then I discovered bands like Sepultura, Pantera. Oh man, I want to sing like this. And, you know, it was a mix of feelings and yeah, but it didn't take too much time to realize that, okay, man, this is what I want to do. Was it, has, has this been the one thing you have focused on? Did you ever have a plan B to fall back on or was it, I'm going to do music or bust? Well, I, I, I was at cinema school. Okay. Yeah, for four years. And this was like, you know, something that um, I grew up with music and also with my passion for movies. And this was like kind of my backup plan. But I felt like, you know, it was both paths uh, were connected since the since the beginning. Ah, very cool. What's your favorite type of, of movie genre? Oh, probably horror movies. Horror? Give, <laughs> give us a couple of your favorite horror movies. Uh, Cal, uh, it's a tough question, man. It's hard to say, but let's see. Everything from John Carpenter. <laughs> mm, yeah. I, you know, the Thing, for example, is one of my favorite horror movies. Then I also love movies like Creep Show, David Cronenberg's The Fly, mm. stuff like this. Nice. Especially 80s horror movies. Yeah. Yeah. That's the great stuff then. Now, Crysis has the EP coming out on the 24th. You alluded to an album that's going to be coming out next year. Is that in the can mixing mastering part, or are you still in the midst of recording that one? We are still recording right now. And actually, I have to go to the studio tomorrow to continue recording some vocals. And yeah, you know, the machine never stops. I mean, we started before this tour, and now we are continuing recording at the studio. And then I can't wait, guys, you to hear the, the new stuff. Very cool. And that'll be coming out sometime next year, which we'll look forward to yeah, that. Some, sometime. I don't know when, but sometime. <laughs> and, and, and you still have some more tours planned as well. So a little bit more touring. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of stuff uh, next year. I mean, we're uh, coming back to Europe in November, second leg of, of this tour with our friends from Insanity Alert. Uh, all right, it's gonna be around Netherlands, uh, Germany, and it's gonna be killer, I'm pretty sure. And for the next year, it's gonna be a lot of stuff with the new album. And I mean, I, I don't know if, we, if a zombie apocalypse or something it's coming, <laughs> next year, but let's pray for not. Yeah, but I'm, pre I'm prepared for a zombie apocalypse, I'm prepared, <laughs> yeah, that's just crazy, you know. Um, yeah. You've got to be thrilled, though, with the, with the response that this pizza EP is getting before it's even out. You've got those videos up on YouTube that are getting a lot of attention. That's got to be a thrill for you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I mean, we, we're uh, super proud of all the reactions and all the things that we are receiving from reviews and stuff from the pizza EP. And yeah, everybody is 
is loving the, the pizza pizza. I, I mean, I don't see too much negative, uh, you know, reviews or comments about the pizza pizza. So we are so happy. Yeah, that's very cool. You know, and I think everybody's just so happy to have music coming out and bands touring and, and everything like that. So yeah, yeah and absolutely. you know, the, the thing it's it's coming back slowly. I mean, the shows are coming back. I mean, ar around there, it's pretty normal situation now, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well. I mean, we got this Delta variant going around and it's it's sort of yeah, raising yeah. havoc here and there. It seems to depend on where you are in the country as to what is going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, here it's the same. Let's see what happens in, in the next months. But man, we have to stay positive. We Absolutely. have to enjoy pizza. And <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And if we go into lockdown again, we watch, you know, the videos and have a good yeah, time. Yeah, of course. That. Of course. And we're uh, going to remember that how much world needs more. <laughs> <laughs> We are chatting with Huli Bazooka of Crysix here. He is the lead vocalist. Their EP, the Pizza EP, is coming out September 24th on Listable Records. Listenable Records, that is. Uh, yeah. They have a great series of videos that are up on YouTube. You can check that out. Huli, I always like to end with um, just some fun questions, maybe questions you've never even been asked. Sound good? Okay, shoot it. <laughs> uh, if you go to the amusement park, are you a roller coaster or a Ferris wheel kind of guy? I'm a roller coaster guy. <laughs> Live on the edge, right? Always. <laughs> um, if you could speak, if you could speak any language instantly, what would it be? Japanese, for Japanese. Of course. <laughs> right. Um, do you usually travel heavy or light when you go out on tour? I try to be light. Okay. I mean, this is what I learned over the years. Mm. What is one essential item that you always throw in your travel bag, though, other than the obvious like mics and cables and stuff like that? What's one essential item that people might not realize they, that it goes in the travel bag? OK, in my case, probably my notebook, because I'm oh. super old school, even to write, you know, ideas that comes to my mind. I mean, I don't like to write it on my mobile phone or whatever. I like yeah. to travel always with my notebook. Very cool. That is very cool. Last music other than your own that you listen to? Last music. Uh, I was listening to Dirt from Alice in Chains. I know oh. it's not a new album, but I love the album. And this is what I've been listening this morning. Mm, fantastic album. Um, favorite toy growing up as a child? Favorite toy, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> right. um, if you have one. What is a day off from music like for you where you're not going to sing, you're not going to write, you're not going to play? What do you do to relax? Go to the movies. Of course. Go to the movies. All right. Speaking of movies, okay. this is, my, this is movies. my final one, and this is the uh, one we have the most fun with. Let's if they, go. If they were to make a biopic of your life, what actor <laughs> I knew it. I would that portray it. you? I knew it. Uh, I, I, oh, let me think. I don't know. Uh, I would say Antonio Banderas, but <laughs> There you go. That's a great know. answer. Great answer. <laughs> Huli, this has been a real pleasure to talk to you about Chrysix and the Pizza EP. Once again, I mean, the, 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 the pleasure was mine, man. I had a really, really great time with you. All right. I appreciate your time. Good luck going forward. Safe travels everywhere. And we hope everybody stays healthy. Yeah. Thank you very much for your work, man. Hope to see you soon in the USA and eventually. That would be amazing. Hopefully you guys yeah. get over here. Of course. Thank you, Huli. Thank you very much, man. Bye-bye.